FDR, welcome back for another episode. Yeah, nice to see you, Jim. Yeah, Plywood Series, we're having some fun. Mm, you bet. I'm kind of excited about this episode because I think it's a question that probably a lot of people wonder about. We've been focused mostly on plywood manufacturing, but as you mentioned, uh, OSB came on the scene at some point, and obviously it's a it's a mainstay in the market. Oh yeah. But my specific question for you today is, you know, what's the difference in manufacturing plywood versus making an OSB panel? Sure. Well, OSB is oriented strand board is what it stands for, Jim. And basically what you're looking at is strands, not chips, but strands that are kind of interwoven. And if you really look at it, you'll see it in there that they're, they're, they are oriented in a certain way as to derive strength. They mix that with resin, obviously, and they, under a heat and pressure uh, situation, they generate giant pressing of OSB and then cut it into the dimensions they, they want. So, so it just kind of rolls out the end and they... Right, so it's kind of a fan-like press so you'll see it, it's kind of like this big fan of, of these giant panels. And they can, they can vary in, in size, and then they cut them into sections. So like not every mill will make 10 foot because their press doesn't break down into 10 foot lengths. They were made to make strictly eight foot. So that's what oriented strand board uh, is a completely different product, but it has the same effective strength values per thickness. So for instance, 7 16 OSB has the same span rating as half inch CD four ply. Okay. So no difference whatsoever in the, in the, in what, you know, the performance is of the product. Okay. Well, TR, I know there's OSB mills in Canada, obviously plenty throughout the United States. I was just curious uh, what they do with respect to fiber sources. And if that's driven by geographic regions or how do they look at that? Well, it's really, it, I think it comes down to where can they grow the tree the fastest and, and you know, get those strands generated so they can make their product. Um, Southern yellow pine is an obvious uh, answer to that. It's a, you know, in 20, 25 years, you've got a tree that you can, you know, chip up and make the strands you need to make the OSB. Um, they have giant plantations down there and they're just turning, you know, there's turning all the time. There's giant tree farms is what they really are. and. Uh, you know, uh, it, it happens fairly fast, so they're sustainable. Up in Canada, you're in Aspen, and uh, and that's kind of been uh, preferred through the years. But honestly, at this point, everyone's gotten very well versed at making the product, regardless of what species you're putting in there. Aspen is is viewed as like uh, Doug Fir was for plywood. You know, it was it just didn't really uh, get into uh, environments and and move. Whereas southern yellow pine would get in certain environments and would swell and uh, cause some claims, especially like in the Bay Area where the fog layers come in and mm -hmm. such like that. Sure. So okay. in California, we'll buy whatever's cheapest. But there's certain contractors down there that found that I want the Aspen, I want northern board. They call it northern board, northern which is board. Yeah, basically, yeah. you know, what's coming from B.C. and, 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 uh, and thereabouts. So you touched on a little bit earlier, but strength thick same thickness i mean there really is no they've figured that out they have no it's okay. it's absolutely uh 7 16 and half inch cd4 ply are the same span rating and the same strength factor okay and i know the product has evolved over time just in, in my time in the lumber yard you know a smooth face versus a little textured face i guess a couple of questions there is is there one that needs to go go up for like warranty purposes and or the whole safety and the slip resistance thing can you touch on well those yeah when you're when you're on roofs you know you want that texture on the t uh, that you're walking on and so these presses in the osb mills have all become embossed so they put a little kind of grid pattern uh on the on the on the back of the panel that you know is able to allow roofers to just not be on a slip and slide when it's a little moisture in the air it was a big deal like 20 years ago there was a, a lot of mills didn't have that embossed press but now it's all for the most part you know the roofs the roofs are all safe because no one wanted the liability anymore yeah okay and panel sizes in general yeah they they make jumbos in osb so one of the osb's uh, main industrial uses is uh the van industry so they'll do like these fiberglass reinforced panels that are on the sides of um FedEx trucks or any truck for that matter. I mean, they're, they're these jumbo panels that are oh, 
you know, 12 by 24 or something like that. I mean, they're big. And, uh, you know, nothing that uh, is the commodity industry would ever have interest in, honestly. But that's a, that's a big deal for the OSB. You know, the plywood can't make a panel like that, and OSB can at, at a very effective cost. Okay. With respect to pricing or final market pricing, did there used to be a general, hey, in general, something was more expensive than the other, yes. I guess, with yes. respect to sheathing plywood yeah. so this, this, in this today's is, world? Yeah, this is a really excellent question. This is a change that's happening right now, um, and it's been really happening the last four or five years you've watched this transition. So I would say between 1996 and you know 2017, 18, uh, OSB had gained the market share that they were going to gain and they were always a little cheaper than plywood. And then the people that wanted to use plywood that had that taste for plywood always paid a little more. So for instance, if 7 sixteenths went up to $300 and half inch was $300, you always knew that half inch was going to go to 325 or 350. It was an automatic. That is not the case anymore. OSB has actually gained so much footing in the market that what we saw the last couple of years during COVID and when we all knew the, uh, this, this lumber market that just went nuts is OSB literally dragging plywood along. So you saw 716s get as high as $2,200 per thousand on truck. I mean, we're talking $70 a sheet here for a piece of 716 OSB and half inch four ply getting dragged up to $60 a sheet just because OSB was... Because they could. Yeah, because <laughs> OSB was 70. And, you know, it never, ever was the case. Plywood always was ahead price-wise of OSB. It kind of just was a ladder that either went up or down. So you never really saw plywood go under OSB ever and now that whole theory is out the window and is it due to osb being more in demand out on the job site yeah it is in certain areas of the country osb has become preferred now you got to understand that you've got a new generation of contractors out there true they grew up with osb so now you got guys that have been using osb for 25 years yeah. and uh that's what they're used to that's what they want they haven't had any bad experiences with it they prefer it yeah. Plywood, on the other hand, um, those contractors that prefer plywood are retiring. Yeah. You know, they're they're not as uh, prevalent in the contractor uh, marketplace, if you will. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of an interesting dynamic that's happened. Okay, well, I appreciate you sharing that. That's great insight and a and a good episode for our audience. Thanks, Dr. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks.